Hello and welcome to another uh, tutorial on the dev.java website and we are looking at uh, starting with the uh, uh, java programming and in this uh, tutorial I'm going to look at the item about setting up the java development kit and this is actually very important and uh, when you start your java journey uh, you want to download a java development kit or jdk because that has the command line tools you need to compile your java code and build your java application and then run it using a jvm right so you can download the jdk from different places and at the moment we have different vendors that offer support for open jdk jdk itself is pretty much open source uh, it's available on github i believe and then um, uh, companies like Amazon or IBM, they uh, they fork it, they uh, they provide their own builds, right? So it's a matter of uh, downloading the source file or maybe and then adding some extra stuff to it and then building it. You can even download the source code directly and build it yourself on your computer. It usually takes a long time to build it, but it's definitely possible. So you can you don't even need to download it from the source. Uh, download the binaries if you don't trust the builds. You can download the source code and build it yourself. Well, obviously, uh, people always uh, prefer to just download the binary builds that are already available. And Oracle provides such builds. So um, there is one stop page that always refers to the latest version of the JDK, jdk.java.net. JDK Even if you go to just dev.java, it also points you to the latest version of the JDK. And this gives you the Oracle build of the JDK. Selecting the latest ready for use JDK version takes you to a page where you can download the version of the JDK you need, right? So from this page, you can download four versions. And again, uh, binary builds are platform dependent. And a platform means uh, um, a platform means uh, the hardware you're using, the CPU instruction set, and then the operating system. That's why you see the name of the operating system and what instruction set that binary build is for, right? You feed it, you feed your source code, which in terms of the JDK, it's in C++. Uh, and then uh, basically it compiles it and creates an executable, which is your JVM, right? Whatever that uh, runs the Java application. And that depends on the uh, operating system because uh, uh, when you write your, for example, C++ code, you have to do some sort of kernel call. So each operating system provides a very low level uh, API for the applications to directly talk to the hardware, right? So operating system is always the middleman in, in terms of uh, accessing the hardware resources, uh, CPU executing some tasks or reading files, for example, uh, this kind of stuff. So operating system provides some sort of kernel cost and these APIs are different for different operating systems. That's just the way it is. Windows provides its own API. I believe it's in a folder called system32. It used to be Mac OS, Linux, they have their own kernels, right? And usually the operating system come with something called their uh, native development platform. For example, Mac OS, it's Xcode. When you install Xcode, it automatically configures your operating system to other applications uh, check if Xcode is installed and if they need to build something they know that your uh, your Mac OS already has a uh, development environment set up. Linux usually comes with GCC, GNU compiler so um, yeah, you can just use it and build the uh, applications right. So operating system and then the instruction set of the CPUs. Different CPUs have different uh, basically instruction sets and you cannot and these instruction sets are not compatible except for the case of the 32B and 64-bit uh, Intel AMD platforms, right? So they started with x86, which is 32-bit, and then they extended that to x64. So 64-bit architecture is an extension of 32-bit, and any 32-bit application can be run on a 64-bit platform. And that's, that's the reason they eventually dropped the 32-bit builds. So you can also build your application specifically for a 32-bit uh, architecture, but because 32-bit is compatible with 64-bit, then uh, eventually um, they drop the JVM builds or JDK builds for 32-bit. So they only support 64-bit, and uh, uh, you cannot run a 64-bit application on a 32-bit platform. I think at this point in 2021, there is no 32-bit CPU. All the new architecture CPUs that come out, they're definitely all 64-bit. Even macOS is entirely 64-bit. It doesn't even support the 32-bit anymore. 
So this page provides production ready open source builds. So you know that these are builds. These are the binaries, right? These are not the source code of the Java Development Kit or JDK and implementation of the Java SE platform. So Java Standard Edition under the GNU General Public License. If you don't know what GNU General Public License is, it's a open source license and you can google it too and read its term uh, it allows for modification but it doesn't guarantee any support it says that if you use this code you can even use it for example uh, probably in your commercial you have to read through the GNU uh, public license to see what exactly it means but the normal usually you can just use it in your commercial tools right if you are like a company using jdk to build an application uh, but then it doesn't provide any support or guarantee that uh, the code is going to work or anything, right? With a class path exception. Um, setting up the JDK for Windows. So uh, when you down, you know what your platform is, what the operating system and the CPU is, and then you download the correct version. Now you have to go and set up the JDK. And JDK is basically just a command line tool. So there is no installation. I mean, in general, there is no concept of installation. Installation means you normally download a zip file, which contains a lot of executable files, binary files, and you just unzip them and put them in the right place in your operating system. Now, you normally, you want to put the JDK in your uh, system folder. Um, or in your boot drive uh, you, and usually for that you need to have uh, root privileges or root access that's why uh, you need to be an administrator right so usually you want to put the jdk in the somewhere in the uh, user directory for example in mac os um, if i uh, say go to folder we put it in the library java java mutual machines and for copying or uh, transferring some files into this folder you need to have uh, i believe administrative privileges you don't need to be root, but you need to have administrative privileges, right? I mean, you can put also the JDK anywhere else. For example, you can put it in your home directory. So, and then uh, the next step then is to uh, set the environment variables. But then this is not generally available for every user of that operating system. So a computer might have multiple users. And this is very uh, common case for Linux servers, for example. So you can install the JDK for each, any user individually you put it in their home directory and set their uh, environment variable to for java home to point that you directly in the user folder or you put it somewhere in the root one of the root folders and then uh, then that is accessible for everyone right again if you're not familiar with how operating system works especially linux and mac os these are based on unix i highly recommend you to uh, uh, there are great uh, uh, tutorials on YouTube about um, command line, uh, uh, how to learn to work with command line in Linux, Linux and Mac. I highly recommend you to watch those and learn how actually Linux and Mac OS operate. Now Windows has also introduced a Linux subsystem for Windows and therefore um, um, uh, you can, uh, with the knowledge of the command line for Mac OS and Linux, you can also work with Windows and really in, I believe really the command line of Linux is the most widely used command line. It's very nice and easy to use. And Mac OS follows in the same footsteps. So we download the JDK, we unzip it, we copy it to some other folder to permanently keep it there. Now what else? Now we have to tell the operating system where the uh, these uh, command line tools are. And what I mean by that, basically the idea here is that operating system when you let's let's open a terminal whenever you open a terminal somewhere in your operating system and then you want to run an application and the way you do it you give it for example uh, the name of that application java is a binary code right it's a binary application and it takes some uh, command line arguments right so any eventually the uh, your operating system is nothing but a bunch of uh, uh, binary applications that you can run through the command line and then uh, you give it some arguments and in terms of java you give it for example the executable jar file right my jar dot jar and jvm uh, runs or you give it a um, let's say you give it java um, so for example this uh, um, if i create an executable let's create a new class uh, ex executable right we want to have a main method and then um, we just do a sysout hello world 
right? As soon as I save it, uh, uh, JVM um, uh, basically Eclipse compiles it and puts it in the bin directory. Now what I want to do is, um, let's actually close this terminal and open this in the top folder, project folder, right? If I do ls, you see I'm in the bin src, so we are opening the terminal here. Now, if I run the Java application, my operating system can find this executable. And if I say which Java, so in Unix based operating system, if you want to see where this Java application is, or you can have multiple folders that contain in Java and the operating system uh, executes the first one that it finds, right? And again, that goes then into the concept of the path environment variable, which I will talk about. But for now, uh, any executable that you run through the command line, the operating system has to be able to find it. If it's not able to find it, then you have to provide the fully qualified path to that, right? So I can, instead of saying that uh, Java or something, I can say uh, absolute path. And any absolute path starts with forward slash. So forward slash library Java, J uh, Java virtual machine, JDK contains home being Java. And then with this, the operating system doesn't go and look it up. So whenever you provide an executable, operating system checks whether this is an absolute path or a non-absolute path, relative path. And uh, uh, if you provide just the name of the application, it assumes that uh, it's neither absolute nor uh, basically uh, uh, relative. So there's another concept here. So absolute path and macOS and Unix starts with forward slash. What is relative path? Relative path starts with dot. So you can say um, uh, dot Java. So if I just type Java and hit enter, uh, my, uh, my operating system knows where Java is and executes that uh, application. If I say dot slash Java and uh, my operating system says, hey, I don't know what the, where this Java is. I cannot find it. Why is it I cannot find it? Because I tell it it's, it's, I'm giving a relative path. So this is not absolute path because it starts with dot. If I say forward slash Java without any dot, it means I'm specifying a absolute path. And if, obviously if I run it, it says, okay, there is no um, file or directory at the root. Forward slash, the first forward slash here, it means root. On Windows, it's uh, the name of the drive and then call and backslash, for example. This is the absolute path in a Windows. So letter immediately followed by a colon is the absolute path in Windows which is the root directory of your operating system. On macOS and Linux, the root is always forward slash. Now, why is it that the dot forward slash Java doesn't work? Because uh, this is the concept of the working directory. Whenever you run an application, you run it from the command line. And in command line, you always within some directory. And that's your working directory. That's where you launch it from. So if I say PWD, print working directory, it tells me that now I'm the working directory is dev.java, which means if I say dot forward slash Java means that the operating system looks at the dev.java and then goes inside that and tries to find an application called Java inside this folder, which I don't have. That's why it can't find it. If I say just forward slash Java, it means go to the root directory of my operating system and there should be an application Java there. And operating system goes there and sees that it cannot find it, okay? So again, I'm uh, emphasizing this. This is basically very important when you're dealing with operating systems and trying to execute an application. Everything executes from the command line. Even if you double click on an icon on your desktop, for example, eventually in the background, it runs in a command line. And when you run it, you can, uh, uh, the default working directory is the desktop, right? Of your, uh, the desktop folder. So uh, everything executes from the command line. You have the absolute path, absolute path, relative path, and then uh, neither of them. So we know that what happens when we specify an absolute path to an application, for example, Java, the operating system goes and executes it. If it cannot find it there, it gives you an error. The relative path, the same. So you are inside some working directory and say dot forward slash Java, it means from where you are in the forward directory, go and uh, there should be an application Java there. But then uh, what is the neither? Neither means uh, we don't specify any path to the application. We just specify the name of the application. So neither means just specify the name of the application. So what happens in this case? In this case, what happens here is that 
operating system uh, realizes okay this is not a path to an application because it doesn't start with forward slash for example on mac os and it doesn't start with dot which means you're not specifying any relative or absolute path in that case um, uh, operating system goes and looks at a environment variable environment variable called path and luckily this is the same for uh, mac os linux and windows they all use this path environment variable and what this means is that path just points has a list basically path is nothing but a list of folders or directories um, that uh, are provided to the operating system you can modify them and add more directories so and the concept of path is that whenever you specify a neither case which means it's not an uh, on the command line you specify an application without providing an absolute path or relative path then operating system looks at the directories that are specified by path so operating system goes and looks at all the directories from the first one second one third one so from the first one so that's why the order of uh, uh, providing these into the path or appending these directory names to path matters right so operating system starts from the four fo the first folder in the path that the path specifies and tries to see if it can find your application in that folder if not it goes to the next folder next etc etc and um, the first one the first folder that has that application with that name so operating system executes that so you might have multiple folders in your path that uh, point to for example java application maybe one of them is jdk 14 15 etc so the first one that the operating system finds it executes that so it assumes that that's what you want so if i say java hyphen hyphen version it tells me that uh, jdk 15 if i want to see what's what directories on on my path operating system obviously because i cannot exe i can execute java directly by its name it means it's definitely in one of the folders specified in my path so let's look at it if i type path it's it's it the operating system doesn't know what it is because environment variables have a special syntax on mac os and linux they start with double dollar sign on windows i believe they start with uh, uh, they start and end with uh, 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 percentile person but on uh, mac os uh, it just uh, uh, is dollar sign and path and as you can see we have like uh, default ones like user local bean and then i have this library java virtual machine contents home bean and uh, actually i have it twice on my path for some reason but as you can see this uh, bean folder which has all the executables of the JDK, which is Java, Java C, JLink, J package, etc. They are inside here, and um, um, and then uh, whenever I type Java, this is the first folder that my operating system finds that includes the Java that has Java application, an application, a binary executable called Java inside of it. So if I want to say uh, what is inside this. If I say ls, which is list directory, as you can see, it has all the executable, all the applications that have this, uh, 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 basically, uh, have uh, all the applications that are contained in this directory. Th these are the name. So if I specify um, any of C, for example, JDB, and then uh, say which JDB, right? Um, this is the first folder my operating system finds that has the JDB so it's going to give me JDB from this folder which is from uh, um, sorry I miss uh, misspelled which which is inside this uh, bean director of JDK 15 so this is very important I hope you really understand it in the next uh, tutorial I'm going to continue with uh, uh, with this item setting up a Java development kit please stay tuned and I'll see you in the next one